Hello everyone, welcome to another Collections Minute at the Litchfield Historical Society. I'm Alex Dubois, Curator of Collections, and I'm here today with a bit of a special video. On June 5th, the Historical Society will host a lecture by the Calder Foundation in the Tapping Reef Meadow. Because we're lucky enough to have a few original Alexander Calder pieces in our collection, we decided to feature them in two Collections Minutes leading up to the event. Let's take a look at today's object. What we're looking at is a maquette or artist study made by Alexander Calder while working on a project here in Litchfield. So this study is completed on a piece of plywood. You can see that in some areas it has screw holes, leftover screws, different nicks and dings, almost as if it was a piece of scrap wood that he had found and started painting on. You might have been using this to figure out things like the layout, the dimensions, the scale, the colors, and other aspects of this finished project. If you look closely at this piece, you can actually see pencil marks where Calder has noted dimensions and other changes he wants to make on the finished piece. Let's learn more about Calder and his connections to Litchfield now. Alexander Calder was born into a family of artists. His mother was a trained painter, and his father and grandfather were accomplished sculptors. Beginning his career with illustrations and paintings, Calder experimented with wire sculpture before moving to Paris in 1926. In France, he began work on the Cirque Calder, a body of articulated wire sculptures designed to be performed for an audience. Calder performed and evolved the circus for a number of years in both Paris and New York. Many of Calder's early kinetic sculptures were moved using motors, it was fellow artist Marcel Duchamp that first dubbed these moving sculptures mobiles. Soon, Calder stopped using motors and began creating sculptures that would move freely in the air. In 1933, Alexander and his wife, Louisa, purchased a home in Roxbury, Connecticut. While they remained world travelers, the Calders left a rich legacy in their adoptive state. What brought Calder to Litchfield? That story begins in 1949, when Litchfield residents Rufus and Leslie Stillman visited the house in the museum garden full-scale modern home constructed in the sculpture garden of New York's Museum of Modern Art. Convinced that modern design was the right path for their own home in Litchfield, the couple sought out and commissioned the house's architect, Marcel Breuer. Equally renowned for his achievements in architecture and furniture design, Marcel Breuer studied and taught at the famed Bauhaus School in Germany. He was among a group of designers who left the school in the face of rising political pressure in the country, culminating in the closure of the Bauhaus in the 1930s. Breuer eventually joined the school's founder, Walter Gropius, at Harvard University before forming his own architecture firm in New York. Breuer's first project in Litchfield was Stillman One, completed in 1950. The project ushered in a productive period of modern design in Litchfield, including both private homes and civic buildings. Thanks in part to introductions made by Rufus and Leslie Stillman, Breuer's designs were joined by those of John Johansson, Edward Larrabee Barnes, Edward Durrell Stone, and other modern architects. It was Breuer who introduced the Stillmans to Alexander Calder. The architect even added one of Calder's colorful mobiles above the open stairwell in the Stillmans' new home, one of multiple Calder originals owned by the couple. In 1951, Calder designed and executed a mural on the freestanding wall screening one end of the home's pool. Variations of the design were added to the two subsequent homes that Breuer designed for Rufus and Leslie. If the mural looks familiar, it's because this is the project for which Calder made the maquette we looked at earlier. His original mural no longer exists, but the design has been restored to the current pool wall. The maquette was given to the Stillmans, who then donated it to the Historical Society in the 1970s, along with two original Calder paintings. Well, I hope you enjoyed learning more about Calder, Breuer, and the Stillmans. Come back next month for another Calder-inspired Collections Minute. Be sure to check the Society's website for more information about our June 5th event with the Calder Foundation. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Don't forget to like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter and Instagram, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. If there's an object you want to see featured in a video, let us know. It might just become our next Collections Minute.